Alright you guys, so I'm back with another video and today we're getting down to the nitty gritty and we are going to start reinstalling the suspension components into the car. I got my control arms rebuilt as you've seen in the last video. So here they are. I got the control arms built, everything's ready to go back in the car. So my first step is going to be to put the upper control arm into the car and I will show you guys that right now. Alright you guys, so I'm down here underneath the car and this is where I need to get the control arm and it's a little tricky to kind of weave it in between here but um, a few things that I want to point on um, you need, it's a good idea to get new bolts, new hardware that goes through here because these, I don't know if you can see it, but they have like serrations on them and those cut into the metal and when you take them out they kind of break those serrations off so it's a good idea to get new ones of those and they also come with these uh, oval shaped nuts that are kind of pinched in so they kind of crimp down. Now normally you, when you would, if you were just doing some random job, I don't know why you'd have the control arms out, but you'd put, these are alignment shims, you'd put them back in where they go, they go like right here. Uh, but since we changed out everything and all the stuff that we changed out was bad, we're assuming that the alignment if we put the shims back in it's just going to be completely messed up so we're installing everything without shims and we're just going to take it to the alignment shop and tell them that we did that and just get them to do what they need to do to get it all aligned and stuff so all right i'm going to go start installing this all right so i got the bolts in uh, now I just need to tighten the nuts down on the other side. Um, normally at this point you can slide the shims in and then tighten them down. But um, yeah, I'm just going to tighten them down. You get the point. So I will be back once I am done with that. Okay, so I forgot to mention something earlier. But with these serrated type of bolts, you're going to want to do all the tightening from the nut side. Um, and you also have to torque them from the nut side as well. And you can't do that um, unless you have like torque wrench that'll fit in there but you just kind of kind of guesstimate it and tighten it the way it wants to tighten uh, just crank down on it but other than that looks pretty good so next step is the lower control arm which I will show you guys after I'm finished with the upper <music> So I got everything installed now. I just need to start torquing um, the control arm stuff down. These bolts are 45 foot pounds, and uh, these lower bolts, this back one, is 90 foot pounds, and these front two are 75 foot pounds. So, or 70 foot pounds, one of the two. So I'm gonna get the torque wrench out. I'm gonna do the lower ones, and then I'm just gonna kind of crank on the top one I'll show you guys that right now all right so i just want to show you guys real quick why you can't tight torque these down in the car um so like i don't know i can't even put my camera in there but you can see right here you have to fit a torque wrench in between here and then you have like this much room to to move it and then on the front if i go down here it's like right against the fan shroud so there is no way that you are going to get a torque wrench in there and torque that down so that's why i did it outside of the car and uh, if you follow the instructions that they say you're going to be in a real big predicament because you're going to install it and then when it's on the ground you're going to see uh oh you know i'm supposed to i should have torqued those down before i got in the car so be sure to torque them down before you put them in the car Ninety foot pounds is so hard to do on your back. <laughs> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to tighten down the lower ball joint nut, and then I am going to put the or I'm going to pick it up and bolt it to the upper ball joint just to hold it in place so that I could fold this towel up, put it on the jack, and then I'll have the 
weight of the spindle supported on the jack because it weighs like 50 pounds so it's hard to kind of lift up the control arm when you're holding 50 pounds so I'm gonna do that right now <laughs> All right, so now I am going to unbolt the upper and lower this back down. All right, guys, so now that I have that in place, it's time to put the spring in. Now, normally with the car spring, you want to compress them with like a, I don't know, compressor, spring compressor. But these ones are kind of small, so I don't really need to, and I can just put the jack on it. Um, so I don't know if it's like this with all springs, but this uh well you're doing this on purpose aren't you why do you have to fill up a bucket of water right now okay so i don't know if it's like this i don't know if it's like this with all springs but the tag on the bottom is the bottom of the spring so it goes in like this now you want to put this little notch on the indicator so um i'm gonna slide this in and I'll show you guys that right now. Okay, so there's an indicator like pocket right here that you're gonna want to put the bottom of this coil in there. So I'm gonna do that right now. But I Alright, so I got the spring in and uh, all the ball joints are bolted up. They're not torqued down yet. Um, I need to do that. So the rule with tightening down castle nuts is since there's a hole right there that you have to stick a cotter key in, you have to um, tighten, torque it down to where it is, check to see where the hole is in relation to one of these slots, and then according to that, then you tighten it down more. You don't loosen it to have one of the holes show. You tighten it down. Stick the cotter key in, and then you do the that thing. So um, I got to torque those down right now, and I'll be back for the next step. Okay. All right, you guys. So it is shock time. So this is my shock right here. This is a Bilstein B8, I believe. It's a sport Bilstein sport shock. Um, now I wanted to talk about these washers up here. It comes with three washers um, and there's a specific order that they go in. Now you have like a, there's this washer right here and it has like this little like chamfer on the inside and that's so that it can lay down on this little split washer right here. Like so, and then you have a, a bushing. And now this thin washer with the, the, the lip on it that goes like right there. Now the black and the other bushing go on top of the tower. So you'll stick this through with this stuff. Sorry for my filming, but okay. So you, you'll stick this part through and then this goes on top like it's that and then you tighten it down. Um, that's the order that they go in. Um, I figured I'd tell you guys that cause there's no instructions in the box that tell you that. <laughs> This is the top of the the shock. Now you, you gotta stick an Allen key in the center, and then you can, you have to use a wrench. Uh, I have ratcheting wrenches, which help a lot, but um, it kind of takes a little while. Some of them have uh, little like slits in them for screws. Some of them have squares that you have to put like a little tiny crescent wrench on them. This one has an Allen key, so I'm gonna do that right now. There's no point in showing it to you guys because you pretty much get the point. So I will be back once I'm done with that. So, got the shock installed. Um, you can see I have a, some squish out on the bushing right there. 
Um, I got the little hole all tightened up and stuff. Um, so my next step is going to be, um, I'm going to change the wheel bearings out. Alright, so the first step to doing the wheel bearing is to take this dust cap off. So I got a little screwdriver and a mallet and I'm going to pop this cap off. Now that I have the um, this dust cap off, I'm going to pull this cotter key out and take that castle on it off. to get the seal out you put this nut back on so you put the nut on and you grab the rotor and you give it a, like a couple good pulls there you go all right, so I got the bearings out and cleaned. I cleaned the subshaft and all these little parts that are going back into it. Now, the proper way to do this job would be to like replace the races as well. But um, our races are pretty nice looking. They're not gouged or anything. So we're just gonna use them and to replace them, it's pretty hard to get them out. So we're just gonna reuse those. We got we got new bearings. So we're gonna use some bearings and we're just gonna keep the same old races in there. So we're gonna do that right now. I was gonna film like the bearing packing and putting them back in and stuff, but um, my hands were all greasy and I couldn't touch my camera. So pretty it's pretty much the same procedure, just in reverse. Um, so now, pretty much, I'm just going to take my caliper and put it back onto the rotor. So I'm going to do that right now. Calipers installed. Um, I just need to paint it and then I will be installing the tie rod in afterwards. Alright, so that's it for today's video. Um, if you liked the video, please leave a like. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you aren't subscribed, please consider subscribing. And I will see you next week on the next video.